The consortium hosts monthly presentations on a variety of research topics, and I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker, Sai Lakshmi Subramanian. Sai is a biomimetician at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston. She's involved in a number of consortium working groups and is spearheading the development of the XRNA Atlas. Sai's talk today is titled, Overview of the First Public Release of the XRNA Atlas. Sai? Thanks, Matt. Um, I hope everyone can hear me clearly. Um, I'm Sai Lakshmi Subramanian. Um, I work in the lab of uh, Dr. Alexander Milosavlovich at uh, Baylor College of Medicine. So as Matt just mentioned, um, we are the data management and resource repository of the uh, extracellular RNA consortium. Uh, specifically, um, we host the uh, Data Coordination Center. Um, so I'm going to be um, talking about the first public release of the X XRNA Atlas. Um, so we released it uh, less than a month back. So um, if you have uh, any questions, uh, please make a note of it. I'll address them at the end of the presentation. Um, so this is going to be the outline of my talk today. I'll give a brief introduction to what the XRNA Atlas is all about, um, a very uh, small overview of the XRNA profiling data flow, uh, and then go into the uh, various features of the Atlas, like uh, the filtering searches and how you can download data, the, the various statistics and summaries that are available in the Atlas, and we'll have questions at the end. So, this slide gives a brief introduction to the XRNA Atlas. So what is this Atlas all about? So this is the data repository of the uh, ERC consortium, and this is developed and maintained by the Data Management and Resource Repository. Uh, it, the, the DMRR has various components, the, the Data Coordination Center, which is at Baylor. We uh, host this uh, XRNA Atlas. Um, it contains the extracellular RNA profiles from various biofluids and conditions. So the data is submitted by various um, uh, data generators from the consortium. Uh, the Atlas has um, a variety of features like faceted filtering and a lot of navigation tools. You can search, you can view data, and you can also download them, uh, the, the raw data files as well as the processed uh, uh, results. Uh, this is the first release of the pub first public release of the XRNA Atlas. So, um, as you can see, more features will be added in the coming uh, months, and um, the existing features will be improved uh, based on feedback. So, currently, we store samples profiled using small RNA sequencing assays. So, we'll be adding qPCR uh, XRNA profiling uh, uh, data sets very soon. But right now, it's uh, small RNA seq. So the data sets are uniformly processed using the uh, Excert small RNA-seq pipeline. So this um, Excert small RNA-seq pipeline is developed by the uh, data integration and analysis component, uh, which is uh, at uh, Yale University. Um, Dr. Mark Gerstein, um, um, he is the head of the uh, data integration and analysis component. So as of today, we have about uh, 519 XRNA profiles in the Atlas, and um, we're going to be adding more samples as and when they are processed. So I'm going to give a brief overview of the uh, XRNA profiling data flow. So what happens when the data is um, profiled and submitted to us at the data, uh, data Coordination Center or the DCC? So we've developed a, a very comprehensive uh, pipeline uh, so people can submit data through the uh, FTP submission server. So uh, the data as well as the metadata, associated metadata is submitted. I'm going to tell you why both are equally important. So both the data and the metadata actually form the, the backbone of the XRNA Atlas. So that's why I'm giving you this overview. So, um, like I mentioned before, uh, the data is processed using this analysis pipeline called XERT. Um, then the metadata is um, stored in a, a, a Mongo database called January KB. We have been developing this metadata tracking system, and it's been used by a few different projects in our lab, but uh, predominantly the XRNA metadata tracking um, is um, done using this Chenberry KB system. I'm going to be showing um, a few things um, in the live demo. So both the data and the metadata actually form the XRNA Atlas. 
So the data is going into this repository. And further, you can download this data and then you know, perform downstream analysis like pathway and interaction analysis. And this entire framework um, is um, uh, supported by um, Genbury. Genbury is, you can see that there's a web link there. So there is a, a software workbench where you can find these tools, except small RNA seq pipeline is available. These other downstream data analysis tools are also available there. And um, the rest of the Atlas, the, the metadata system, everything uh, uses the Genbury backbone. So we use uh, REST uh, APIs uh, for uh, the various uh, communication between the various aspects of the uh, Atlas. So uh, let's see how we can get to the Atlas. So you can first go to the XRNA portal. I'm going to move away from the slides for now and show you the live demo. So you can go to the XRNA portal at xrna.org. So this is the XRNA portal. So if you scroll down, you will see um, a quick links panel. And the very first link there is the link to the XRNA Atlas. So you can click and go to the XRNA Atlas from here. Of course, if you go to the top menu bar, you see a resources section. You can click there, and then uh, it will take you to the uh, data section. So you can actually click the data, and you have the XRNA Atlas link there as well. So these are just two ways, but they're going to take you to the same place. So this is the uh, XRNA Atlas. This is the landing page of the XRNA Atlas. So. Um, to, to get started with the Atlas, you can start with this Getting Started link. So it takes you to a tutorial page, and uh, this tutorial page has a, a very um, descriptive video. This uh, You can actually watch this video at your own uh, leisure, um, but this is pretty much what I'm going to be uh, describing in my live demo today. And of course, you have a lot of um, dedicated wiki pages which uh, give more details about the various features available in the Atlas. So um, I'm just going to scroll through this just so you get an idea of how the Atlas landing page looks like. So you can see you have some uh, informational uh, charts here. Uh, these are very interactive. You can click uh, each of these. You will see some details. I'm going to explain all that. And then there are other ways to um, um, search uh, or filter and look for the uh, ex uh, XRNA profiles uh, available in the Atlas. So we'll go over um, each of these, uh, and we'll click and see what each of these thumbnails do and how you can access the data. And down below, you will see a bunch of uh, summaries, um, summaries and statistics. These are just uh, informational charts, um, just giving you a sense of how many samples are available, what's the percentage of uh, samples that pass QC, and so on. Um, you will also see some uh, details like how many profiles are there, how many small RNA seeds have been deposited at the DCC, and so on. And uh, down in the, the bottom of the page, you will see very um, a bunch of links. These are some useful links. You can uh, click through each to look at some tutorial pages, wikis, or the consortium's data access policy, the quality standards, and so on. And finally, we have some uh, details. If you want to contact us, you can click here and things like that. All right, so let's start with um, how we can do a, a faceted uh, search. So uh, you, as you can see, we have given four different facets here. And these are um, all this information here, all the, the, the titles of these uh, slices, all this comes from the metadata that was submitted with each sample. So like I was telling you earlier, uh, uh, the metadata is equally important because that, that metadata is used for building this atlas. So um, all the data submitters have uh, provided the uh, associated metadata for all their samples, and we've used that. And all this is um, ontologically validated. So we use uh, ontologies from uh, BioPortal um, and then validate all these values that are submitted to us. So um, these are just some uh, representative facets that we have chosen for the first release of the Atlas. Of course, in the, in the future releases, we'll have like options to choose facets that you want to view and so on. So uh, let's first start with uh, a simple search. Uh, what you can do is you can use these, uh, you can select one or more slices from these charts. 
and you can uh, also do a combination of uh, you know one or more slices from all these charts. So let me show a simple search, like uh, say let's choose healthy control and maybe Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. As you can see, there are 480 samples out of the existing 519, which come from these three um, uh, conditions. So to perform a search, you click on this uh, apply filters button, and then you will see a grid view which shows you um, see healthy control, and you can scroll down to see Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. But as you can see, this is from a variety of uh, biofluids, like saliva, you can see uh, serum, CSF, so there are different types of biofluids right here. So let's go back to the search page and then filter it a little bit more. Say you want only samples that are from CSF and maybe just those that were um, um, isolated, in which the XRNA was isolated using this uh, Mirvana Paris um, isolation kit. So as you can see, all your selections just showed uh, right below. And um, so this shows the actual number of samples for each uh, slice that is selected. So when you actually perform the search, you will get all the samples which are from CSF, and they are either from healthy control, Parkinson's, or Alzheimer's and those that used the Mirvana Paris RNA isolation kit. So we'll see what that number is once we perform the search. So right now the search is uh, running and you can see there were 181 biosamples which fell into all those selected categories. So you can see a lot of details. I'm going to uh, spend a few minutes explaining this uh, grid. So you can actually scroll to the right and see more uh, details about this uh, about the selected biosamples. So you can see all those things that you selected for, you know, like healthy control, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and you wanted just CSF, and you also wanted the RNA isolation kit, Mirvana pairs. So you see all of them there. So as you can see, the first column shows the biosample name. So this is the name for uh, each sample as submitted by the, the data submitters. And uh, the second column has uh, two sets of icons. So if you actually scroll down the page, you can see a detailed description of all the icons available in the grid. So you can um, look at it anytime, but I'm just gonna um, show what each one is. So this one will show you, uh, this is a bar chart icon, so it's gonna show you a histogram of um, the RNA profile of this particular sample. So if you click on it, so you see this histogram, and these are uh, this is exactly the order in which the uh, the reads are mapped, right from the input reads after clipping. So this is the stage-wise um, mapping of reads uh, to various libraries, and this is from the Excel Small RNA Seq pipeline. As I mentioned, all these data sets that you see were uniformly processed using the Excel Small RNA Seq pipeline. So you can see the numbers like. This particular sample had 9.8 million reads. After clipping, we had 9.2 and so on. So many reads, like 8.4 million reads were used for alignment, of which uh, 4 million reads mapped to microRNAs, and um, you can see the other uh, details. So uh, you can also download this histogram if you want to use it for something, you know, as uh, uh, an image file. So you can do that. So this kind of a histogram will be, uh, will appear for each of the samples. Uh, of course, what is this next um, icon? So this is a link to uh, external databases. So if this data, if this particular sample has already been deposited in a public domain archive, like SRA or dbGaP or GEO, uh, you will see the links to the, the database here. So if I click on this, I'm seeing a dbGaP ID and I'm, 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 I'm clicking the dbGaP ID, it takes me to the uh, dbGaP study. So as you know, dbGaP is a controlled access database, so uh, obviously we cannot provide the raw data files to you from the Atlas. You have to request the raw data files directly uh, through this uh, link, so through dbGaP itself. So um, if it's an SRA or GEO ID, you will find it there. Um, you'll find the links there and you can download the, the raw data files from there. Of course, we also provide uh, links to download the raw data files right from the Atlas. Um, so here uh, in, in the download data column, you'll find two sets of um, um, icons. 
The first one is for downloading the processed results. So these are results from the excerpt small RNA seek pipeline. Uh, on clicking this, you will actually um, get uh, the processed core results archive, which means you'll just get uh, individual files of uh, read counts uh, um, uh, for various um, libraries like microRNAs, one file for pyRNAs, one file for tRNAs, and so on. Of course, you do have options to download the entire um, results archive. I'm going to show you how you can do that. Um, uh, this shows, this link is not active. If you see uh, in the help text, you can see that uh, this, this, is, um, this link is for controlled access dbGaP archive. This icon means uh, you'll have to click the um, external databases uh, icon and go to dbGaP. So I'm, I'm going to do a different search and show you um, Say if the data is in SRA, you can actually download it right from here. And if the data is in the embargo period, which means um, there is a restricted uh, access for that data set, so then you will see uh, the embargo end date and everything. So I'm going to show you what happens when you click uh, one of these links. So the first thing you're going to see is the uh, a pop-up which shows the ERCC data sharing and access policy. So this pop-up is going to show um, once in, from every page. So you, are, you did this search, you came to this page, and the very first time you click a download um, icon, you're going to see this. So you can read through this. You can um, find more details. You can click through the links. And uh, if you have questions, you can contact me. And of course, you have to click on Agree. And only after that, your, uh, the, the file will be uh, uh, downloaded. So you can save this file. So this is just for this individual sample. Of course, there are 181 samples, so you don't want to be doing this for each one. So we have some convenient options for uh, downloading all the samples from this grid. So you can do it in one shot. So you can download all the core result files, or download all the result files, or download all the raw data files. So again, the raw data files you can download only if it is um, um, you know, freely available. This, in this particular example, all of them are in dbGaP, so you're not going to download the raw data files from here. So, uh, what happens when you click on uh, all one of these links? So, this is going to be a relatively smaller file, um, the core results archive, because all these files are like I told you, they're just the read counts from um, um, the pipeline. But um, the this. The second button, which says download all the result file, it can, contains all the alignments. So it's going to be a pretty large file. So if you really want to see the alignment, you might want to download that. Again, you're going to do that for 181 samples, so the, that archive is going to be pretty large. So what happens is you're not going to download the exact file. When you click on it, you will uh, see um, a, a tab-separated value file. So I'm going to open and show you how it is. So this is how um, you'll get a text file. This is pretty much a, a standard way of um, allowing downloads these days. So you will see the, the data sharing policy here. And then you will also see some instructions to download the data set. And basically, your file is going to have like two columns. The first column is the file name. And the second column is the actual URL. So one way of doing it is, you know, you can copy this URL to your browser. It's going to download these files. Of course, again, that's 181 uh, samples. So I would recommend using um, um, command line tools for more advanced users who are used to, you know, software programming. So this is the easiest way. You can do use tools like wget or curl. We have provided detailed instructions here, and you can download all of them to your computer. So, um, of course, we are going to come up with much easier um, ways to download as well. This is um, quite easy for command line downloads, but uh, for people who want to download right from the browser, it will probably make easier web pages. Um, okay, so this is about downloading um, the data. So next is the metadata. So what if you're interested in uh, additional metadata that, other than what is displayed here? So as you can see, you have the biosample name, the biofluid name, the, the disease condition, or whether it's a healthy control, and some basic details given there. But what if you want some more details, like you want some, um, some uh, details about the experimental protocols? 
So you can actually download the experiment metadata from here. And uh, you have donor metadata. So if you want to download these, you can download them from these using these icons. Okay, so the next column shows you um, if the uh, sample met the quality standards decided by the consortium. So you can actually click this link to see some details. You know, this gives the reference genome reads and what is the number of uh, transcriptome reads and the transcriptome genome ratio. So why these specific things are shown here, you're gonna see that in the uh, uh, QC standard. So you click that link, it takes you to the XRNA portal with the consortium uh, QC standards. So you can go over this document and see how we have set the QC standards for small RNA seq data sets. And as you can see, the um, these are the two important points. The um, individual RNA seq data set should have a minimum of 100,000 reads and um, uh, 100,000 reads that map to the transcriptome. And the fraction of seeds that map to the host genome and uh, the uh, transcriptome should be greater than 0.5. So those are the values you're actually seeing in the, um, the um, this pop-up. So you can see this sample met the quality standard because number of reads is 6 million, obviously more than the 100,000 that we have set. And the transcriptome genome ratio is 0.8, which is clearly about 0.5. So you can see that for the various samples. All right. So this is about the quality standards. Um, next is um, this column which shows you the biosample metadata accession. So if you actually click this link, it'll, uh, it'll take you to Genbury KB. Uh, this is the XRNA metadata tracking system. I'm not gonna go in, into the you know, details, but you can actually see this entire uh, biosample document, more details about the biosample or you can click on, say, the experiment. So what experimental protocols were uh, used on this particular um, um, biosample, you can see what kit was used uh, for library prep and some, some other details. So you can see this for uh, each uh, biosample. And this is gonna be the same if you download these, um, one of the metadata documents using these links, you're gonna get the same document, essentially. And uh, like I told you, there's some additional metadata here, which you can um, produce. All right, so um, one last thing I wanna show here is in this health text, the first part of the health text is gonna show you some key details about what this particular grid is. And uh, you also have some additional help. So if you click on say, uh, batch download, this is gonna take you to a, a tutorial, uh, which gives you more details about the, uh, the uh, data download options that I just described briefly. So you'll have more details here. You can look through this wiki. Okay, so now I'm done with this grid. I just wanna go back and perform a different kind of search. So I wanna clear my selection. So I'm just gonna uh, use this icon to clear my selections. Uh, I can do one more thing. I can select all the samples so it's highlighting all the 519 in all the um, charts. So I can do this search. It's gonna show me a list of everything, all the uh, XRNA profiles available in the atlas. So this is pretty much the same type of grid, except one small thing that I wanna show you here is, this download data column has three different types of icons. One is an icon to download the past few files right from here because this particular sample is already deposited in SRA. So you can actually click and, so this is the first time I'm clicking from this page. So it's showing me the access policy again and I'm agreeing to it. And it's gonna ask me to down, uh, I mean, I, I can download the entire FASTQ file, which I'm not gonna do right now, but um, okay. So there's another type of icon here. Okay, I'm gonna cancel the download, but you can download the FASTQ if you want. So there's another type of icon here. So which says these are some samples which are in the embargo period and uh, the embargo on this data set ends on um, July 1st of this year. So this is uh, just so we give enough time for the researchers to publish their data and um, um, others can still view the process results, but of course they cannot um, publish using this uh, data set until the embargo, data embargo ends. And all these details are clearly explained in the data sharing and access policy. You can read through that and get back to us if you have any questions. All right, so if you keep going down, you can see the last type of icon, which is this, which means the data is in DB gap, and we saw this earlier. 
So these are the three types of icons that are available for the raw data download. Of course, for all the profiles that are available, you can download the processed results. That, that is available for download. Okay, so I am done with uh, my searches. I have explained everything in the grid. So let's go and um, look at uh, the other ways of exploring data. So this is just one type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, one way to explore and select uh, available XRNA profiles that are in the atlas. So let's see there are a few others which are pretty much uh, similar but slightly different in its own way. So these are like donut charts that you saw and we have something called the partition grid. So this is one type of a partition grid. So here we, we already show you um, a combination of biofluid and conditions. So say plasma and colorectal cancer. We have only three samples. So you can actually click and view what those three samples are. Or say you're interested only in um, um, glioblastoma samples from condition media. So you can select that. So let's just click one of these and see. The grid is going to look exactly the same as how it was in the other one. But this is just an alternative way to, to you know, filter the samples that are available and choose your samples of interest for download. So this is one way of uh, looking at the, the data that's available in the atlas. And the other type is biofluid versus uh, assay type. Like I told you, right now we only have small RNA seq so this is the entire set of samples that we have. Uh, very soon, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to populate this column with QRT-PCR data sets. So, so again, if you click on it, you're going to see the same type of grid, and you can download those selected samples and so on. So these are just you know ways to uh, help you uh, pick your sample samples of interest uh, quickly. And there's another way uh, we've provided, which is called a drill down approach. So in this, you, you have the choice um, of, you know, selecting the, um, um, the facet, and you can choose one or more, and it um, gives you a union of the results. But in, in the linear tree drill down, which is yet another uh, different uh, method of drill, going down and searching your samples, what you're going to do is you start with one particular uh, metadata facet, which we have chosen, you know, say anatomical location. So I just want to point out that this anatomical location is the location of the study and not the location from which the biofluid was collected. So let's say my study was targeting entire brain-related um, diseases. Okay, so I'm choosing entire brain. And then... Um, I, I have samples, so I have an option to choose either serum or CSS. So let me choose CSS. And then I can see that there are three types of samples available, either uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or healthy control. So I'm going to choose one of them. So let me choose Alzheimer's. So you can see that whatever I'm choosing is clearly highlighted. And, and the um, so this, this also uh, changes when I choose, you know, a particular node. CSF 181 samples and Alzheimer's is 62 samples. So now I'm going to perform the search. And it gives me the same type of grid. So the grids are going to be uniform. So you don't have to worry about, oh, what's there in this grid? It's going to be the same stuff. So, uh, but you can see this is entire brain uh, related diseases. And uh, the, the biofluid name is CSF and the disease is Alzheimer's. So um, as you can see, the sizes of these nodes are actually uh, correspond to the, the number of samples. So obviously this is the largest node. So there are 345 samples from uh, this particular study. So you can choose anything you want. Like you say you want to choose high-density lipoprotein, and uh, that's the, the, the target area of study. And uh, the biofluid was plasma, and then you have three samples from healthy control and three from systemic lupus um, disease. So you can choose like this, and now this is highlighted and I can perform this. So you can actually drill down uh, using this. And this is like a more targeted search than the first uh, type of search that I showed you. This helps you drill down from one level all the way to the, the last node. Of course, if you don't want to go down to the last node, say you want to say, uh, see all the entire brain samples, then you just click there and then um, perform the search. You can stop at any node you want, and it's going to show you all the entire brain samples. 
So you can do um, a variety of things using these charts. Okay. So uh, these are uh, four different ways of exploring data in the atlas. So now we're going to look at some statistics. These are just um, informational charts. Uh, they give you percentages, like um, out of these 519 uh, samples, 35% um, with CSF, and uh, so on. So you can actually look at um, all these different things. Um, uh, the last type of uh, summary that we have in the ATLAS is the, um, the XRNA profiling study. So if you click on this, you're going to see a new type of grid, which shows you um, all the different data sets, that is, the studies that were deposited. So we have, like, um, gastric cancer study. We have um, profiles of XRNAs from CSF and serum with, uh, from uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's patients. So we have um, other types of studies like, you know, exogenous RNA, spectra, and human plasma. So you, you see some details about each study, who is the PI and uh, the funding source and the organization and so on. So what can you do with this kind of um, um, grid? So you can actually click one of them. So you click a particular um, uh, study ID, and then uh, what happens is it shows you what was the uh, data analysis method used? And like I told you, it's uniformly processed using Excerpt. And then uh, you can actually um, click this link. It will take you to the January KB view. Of course, I'm not going into the detail of that. Of course, you can uh, click through each of these and see what's in there. But um, that's basically um, that whatever information is there in that analysis metadata document translates into this particular grid. I'm going to show you that grid. So this is a new type of grid. The first few icons and all are the same. So again, no worries to learn more icons. So uh, this grid basically shows all the biosamples from this study submitted by this particular PI and uh, some basic details, biofluidus serum and uh, small RNA seq cafe. And here you can see uh, the entire RNA profile of this grid. So this is the histogram that we saw in the very first um, um, first few minutes of the uh, presentation. So all, all that information, the read counts, are basically provided here. Again, all this comes from the XSERT small RNA-seq pipeline. And uh, in, in one um, view, like in, in a single grid, you can see all the samples that were part of this and how many um, reads, how many samples had more microRNAs or how many samples mapped to more pyRNAs and so on. So it's just giving you a snapshot in a single grid view. So um, this is an alternative way of looking at the data. And of course, it has all the same functionality you can download and so on. So this, if you want the entire study, you can download from here. And uh, you have some help text which describes uh, the various um, icons and various things in this particular grid. So um, we go back to the Atlas page. And uh, that's the end of the summaries. And like I told you, if you have um, any uh, questions about the features of the Atlas or you don't know how to get the data, just uh, click this, get the link, and send us an email. We'll, we'll respond to you as soon as we can. And uh, I think with that, let me just go back to my slides just to see if I've covered all the points that I wanted to mention. So I'll, I'll quickly go over the slides how to get to the Atlas. So this is going to be like a brief uh, overview of my entire talk now, just so you can um, um, ask more questions after this. All right, so uh, this shows you how to get to the Atlas and then the, the video tutorial that's available. You can click on the uh, Getting Started link in the page, Atlas landing page. So you can click on this to, to view the tutorial video. Uh, it has audio as well as captions, so you can use both. Um, so these are the various um, tested filtering options that I described. What can you do with the donor chart? Uh, you select certain um, slices, and then um, your results will show this grid. So I explained about this grid. Um, and then you have the legend of icons, the various icons. What what can be done with each um, 
icon, if you can click them or if you get more details and so on. And the first one is the histogram icon. You'll see an RNA profile uh, histogram. You can download it. And then you have links to various external databases like, say, dbGaP or, you know, GEO or SRA if the data is submitted to the SRA database or some details about the restricted data access policy and the embargo dates. And uh, you see the data sharing and access policy pop up. You have to agree uh, to this policy so you can start uh, the data downloads. And the various download options, I described all these. And uh, for advanced users, you have the uh, convenient ways to download the data sets. And there's a link to the tutorial, uh, how you can download metadata. And this is the view in uh, the January KB metadata UI. You can view more details from the um, metadata UI. And it, it, for various samples, you'll find more details, like what was the stacking amount of sample, uh, how, uh, whether it was a biological replicate, how many replicates were used, more details will be available in the metadata documents. And then to view the QC standards, you click the, the icons in the QC and you can view the details. Um, the portal has the quality control um, uh, policy document. You can view that. Uh, I showed you the partition grids, the two types of partition grids, how you can access them from the landing page, clicking on those thumbnails. And um, I also showed you the summary grid with the XRNA profiling studies. Uh, you can go from the summary grid to the RNA profile grid as well. So, and then we saw the uh, Atlas statistics uh, in the landing page. And then we, we also saw the linear tree um, drill down um, sub-selection of biosamples. So finally, we saw the various useful links. I've given the various useful links here as well. So, and yeah, so I'm coming to the end of my presentation. I would like to thank all the data submitters from the ERC consortium and um, various people from the different groups, the, the Data Coordination Center at Baylor, uh, the January uh, Software Development Team, and uh, from Yale, uh, the developers of the XF Small RNA-Seq pipeline, and um, from Gladstone, uh, people who have um, developed the uh, downstream analysis tools, which is not part of my talk today, but we do have them available. So once you download data from the Atlas, what do you do with that? You can actually look at the microRNAs of various samples. Uh, you can go to the January workbench and use the tools developed by this group, like Target Interaction Finder or Pathway Finder, and then um, you know and analyze the data set that you downloaded from the Atlas. And um, the group from um, Pacific Northwest uh, who maintained the XRNA portal. And uh, I would also like to thank the NIH for the funding. Now I'm open for questions. Great, thank you, Sai. Yes, uh, any questions for Sai? Sai, can you comment on uh, the update uh, process when new data is coming? Um, right, so whenever new data is submitted to the, the DCC, uh, we'll process them using the same workflow that I just described in the second slide. So um, once it is uh, processed, then um, if, if the, um, the, the data will automatically go into the um, uh, XRNA atlas. So that, that's, that's pretty much, we're, we're not gonna have like, uh, you know, release one, release two of the atlas. It's gonna be continuous release of uh, data sets. So you can actually see the number of samples being updated in the landing page. You know, now it says 519 profiles. When we have new data sets that will be updated, and uh, we'll also mention how many new samples were added. Okay, thank you. Um, so there is a question in the chat window. Can you please tell us where the recording of this session will be available? Yes. So um, the the recording will be available in the XRNA portal. So let me just uh, quickly show you how you can access that. Uh, okay, so we are in the XRNA portal. Let me go to the XRNA. Yeah, so you go to xrna.org, and in resources, you click the resources tab, and you will see presentations. So if you click on presentations, the
the, the consortium, under consortium seminars, you will see this uh, recording added. And we'll also uh, add the, uh, the slides that I just showed. Sai, um, I have a question. The, um, I think it would be useful to explain to people if they want to um, look at public data and they run into a, a, a block for um, uh, the need to go to dbGaP, what do they do next, for example? Yes. Right. So if you go to, um, say, this particular data set I just showed you in dbGaP, so you have to um, uh, directly contact the PI. So it's, here you have these links clearly provided, instructions for requesters. So you have to directly contact the PI through dbGaP. You can follow the instructions here and then request the data set. And um, as you can see, there are a lot of people who have requested and downloaded the data set um, or in the past. So I think it should be um, relatively uh, straightforward to request through dbGaP. Thanks. Any other questions? So I just want to uh, tell people that currently all the data sets are generated by the Exacellular RNA Consortium. So, but then um, the XRNA Atlas is the first uh, data repository of its kind, and uh, we we are um, we we are okay with any data sets outside of the consortium. If you do have your data set and you want to show it in the XRNA Atlas, you can certainly contact us, and uh, we'll help you with the process of uh, uh, getting your data and the metadata through our pipelines. And uh, your data can be part of the XRNA Atlas as well. So it, it, it's just that right now it has the consortium data set, but there's no restriction that it's going to be only the consortium data sets. So if you have XRNA profiling data, you can email us and we'll, we'll uh, start from there. So if you go to the bottom of the page in the footer, you will see um, a, a, a link which says questions or comments. There's a, an email address over there. You can copy that email address and uh, send us an email with any feedback, questions, comments, or suggestions about the Atlas. Okay, any final questions for Sai? All right, if not, well, thank you very much, Sai, and thank you for all, uh, all for attending.